Hello, I'm Pat Ponicello with Automotive Engineering International Magazine here at the SAE World Congress with Jesse Schneider of BMW. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you. Had some questions for you. Um, first, if you could tell me, tell us what your role is at BMW and at um, SAE in terms of fuel cells. Sure, absolutely. Uh, at BMW, I just recently actually moved from our German office, uh, working from the fuel cell division. Um, I'm working right now on fuel cell electric vehicle hydrogen and standards uh, at the BMW side. At SAE, we all wear different hats when we're at SAE. At SAE, I'm the chair of the, the 2601 uh, working group on hydrogen uh, fueling protocol. And that's a document that's been active since about 2002. And we are just about to publish a standard 2013 on hydrogen fueling. How important is that standard? Well, essentially, it, it provides a baseline for hydrogen fueling uh, worldwide uh, in terms of giving uh, fuel cell vehicles the range and, uh, the, um, and fueling time that, that is equivalent to today. So three to five minutes fueling, you can get about 300 miles range, 500 kilometers. And uh, it's really essential. It's one of the critical pieces to uh, ensuring the success of the first stage of commercial uh, onset of fuel cell vehicles. Mm -hmm. And during your presentation today, you showed this slide behind you. Oh, yes. What, what does that show? Oh, actually, well, it, it's not just a, a protocol that we developed at SAE. It's actually been implemented into stations worldwide. Uh, we've, we've been lucky enough to have uh, harmonization with, uh, with Japanese. On the right-hand side, you see a station from Japan uh, near Tokyo um, that's using the J2601 protocol for hydrogen fueling. Uh, you're seeing a station in the middle that's from California that's fueling both light-duty vehicles and buses. And the upper left-hand side, that's in Hamburg. It's a large station that's fueling also buses and light-duty vehicles. And all of that is using the protocol developed right here at SAE. Mm -hmm. And are there more standards required beyond 2601 for fuel cell vehicles really to start taking off? Well, there, there's been about uh, 15 years worth of efforts to get the standards where they are today. Um, there is what thing, what's called the first of its kind, the global technical regulation from the United Nations, where they're working to uh, harmonize the safety of the fuel cell vehicle on the storage side and also really harmonizing with SA 2579, um, which is uh, another colleague of mine is in charge of. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially, the, the hydrogen tank is being standardized. That's, that's something that's going to happen this year. Uh, we really need to have a few years ahead of the production vehicle to have the standards done, which is the reason for the, for the push to get that done this year. That's why 2601 is being standardized. Mm -hmm. And in your presentation, you also said that 2013 is a transition year. What do you mean? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, you know, I, I can just say from this, at least the six automakers that have announced uh, plans for fuel cell vehicles, uh, most of them have announced plans between 2015 and, and 2017, 2020, around that time frame. And uh, in order to, to get the first uh, onset of, of production vehicles in 2015, we need to have the standards done because they need to go into, for instance, on the stationary side, they need to go into a code so that we can uh, have a uniform way how the authorities having jurisdiction can approve stations. And uh, the SAE is working very closely with the automakers and uh, even the DOT, et cetera, to make sure that it's a realistic safety expectations. And uh, these are things that have already been published uh, that, that, are, that are in place to be able to, if you want a production vehicle, you have to really have the standards done first. You have to have a design freeze on the vehicle components, and then you can produce a vehicle a year or two later. Okay, thank you, Jesse. Okay, thank you.